In 2007, while Michael Townsend was taking a female friend around his condominium, three men in uniforms suddenly barged in and promptly handcuffed him without explanation. However, these were not policemen but rather mall security guards. Why did they do this? It's because Michael had been residing for four years and even built his condominium inside the mall they were guarding. How did Michael manage this feat? Well, the phenomenon of mauling is quite common among Filipinos because malls offer a pleasant atmosphere with free Wi-Fi, ample dining options, entertainment like movies, and ideal spots for dates. However, what people usually see in malls is just the exterior facade. Behind the glamorous shops are hallways and passages restricted to mall employees and maintenance staff. These spaces are rarely vacant because every square meter of a mall is valuable real estate. Michael Townsend's story traces back to 1997 when the Providence Place Mall was being constructed in Rhode Island, USA. The mall, with its 100,000 square meters and 160 shops, cost $500 million. Located by a river and a bridge, it became a jogging spot for locals, including Michael. One day while jogging, Michael noticed a peculiar space at the side of the mall, seemingly useless and neglected. Being an artist, he investigated further and found it to be an oddly shaped vacant area with no construction happening. It seemed too small for a retail store and unfit for a parking lot. After two years of protests against the redevelopment of the old mill district where Michael lived, the warehouse rented by Michael and his artist friends, known as Fort Thunder, was converted into a parking lot in 2003. Other parts of the mill district were also transformed into the mall. Feeling defeated, Michael decided to fight back against the corporate giants destroying their community's historic buildings. He proposed a social project with his artist friends to highlight the corporation's actions and the impact of retail development on their community. They came up with the idea of Tremerkind, a German word meaning children of the ruins. To execute their plan, they needed a hidden spot inside the mall where security and staff wouldn't detect them. They remembered the obscure area Michael spotted years ago during the mall's construction. The space turned out to be perfect. It was filled with old construction materials and conveniently overlooked by the security rounds. Michael suggested they turn it into a private condo and live there longer than just a week. So, armed with backpacks and buckets, they cleared out the trash from the room without alerting mall security. They did this day and night at odd hours, slowly bringing in bottles of water, canned food, electrical cables, tools, and utensils for eating, as well as items to start their intended permanent stay here. They also covered its main entrance to avoid suspicion, painting it to resemble a utility door, making it even less noticeable. They connected to the exposed electrical cables in the mall, which allowed them to have lights, an old TV, a PlayStation, and a small refrigerator. Slowly, it began to look like a fully-fledged condo in a prime location, and best of all, it was free. Their only problem was bathing water, but they found access to the cinema's bathroom and casually used it during the last full show at night, blending in like regular moviegoers. They also slowly filled it with items bought within the mall, assembling a sofa and cabinet for glasses and plates. However, it wasn't easy. They had to climb a tall staircase to carry each part of the furniture to their makeshift living quarters. This was seen in an actual video taken by Michael as they carried parts of the sofa upstairs. To make sure their secret remained hidden, they timed moving other items when the mall was busy, pretending to use carts bought from the supermarket inside the mall but were actually carrying their condo items. According to Michael, all the items in their mall-made condo were sneaked in during the morning without detection. They had agreed that only the eight of them would know the secret, and they strictly vowed not to bring in any friends or outsiders. Despite being cautious, they feared getting caught by mall security and possibly being evicted or arrested. However, days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months, and months turned into years without a single security guard knocking on their door. After four years of living there, they felt comfortable, believing they wouldn't be caught. So, they decided to upgrade their condominium by bringing in a water tank for a bathroom and planning to create a real kitchen. They even thought about installing wooden planks on the floor. But little did they know, 
their days in their secret residence were numbered. One day in 2007, they were shocked to find their secret condo vandalized, their belongings scattered, and some items missing. They realized that some of their paintings and the PlayStation were gone. They were frightened but couldn't call the police for fear of being implicated. They suspected someone else knew their secret. They immediately called a meeting, and Michael and his seven friends discussed whether anyone had betrayed their secret. They agreed to change their strategy and only visit their secret condo at night to ensure no one saw them. But what's the point of having such an awesome secret condominium in the middle of a mall if you can't brag about it to your friends? This is where Michael made a mistake. One day, his friend Jaffa, a painter from Hong Kong whom they've known for a long time, visited. Michael decided to show him their secret condo, breaking their agreement to only visit at night. They were hanging out inside when suddenly, they heard walkie-talkie noises approaching. Three mall guards barged in and arrested Michael. He was turned over to the police, but released with Jaffa. The mall owner then filed a case against Michael. During the trial, the judge was impressed by Michael's courage, especially upon learning how they sneaked heavy items through a narrow passage and up a high staircase. The judge ruled that Michael and his friends didn't break any laws and were not engaged in criminal activity. Instead of imprisonment or hefty fines, Michael was only charged with a minor misdemeanor and allowed to go home. Michael considered it a miracle. However, he couldn't set foot in the mall again. The mall's lawyer gave him a map with a red line drawn around the perimeter, indicating he was persona non grata. This was usually issued to shoplifters and troublemakers. It was clear that the mall management feared Michael and his friends might find another secret room if allowed back in. Even 15 years later, Michael couldn't enter the mall. Despite this, he happily shares his experience, even giving TED Talks in different countries. Do you believe Michael Townsend's story? It seems unlikely that mall security wouldn't know about all vacant rooms inside, but someone claimed in a Reddit thread that they talked to a security guard who admitted to sleeping and eating sometimes in Michael's secret condo. However, Michael didn't mention encountering the two new guards, which led to their discovery. What do you think? Do you believe this theory? Share your opinions in the comments below. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.